showtime. <laughs> hey, everybody. We are in my writing room in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, proudly displaying our Radio Free Texas flag behind us. Let me see it a little better. There we go. Get that whole cowboy situation there. <laughs> Um, we are going to play some songs for you today. We've got a little excerpt from the manuscript I've been working on. We've got Michele Gazic in Italy in the waiting room. We're going to bring him in. And Sam Baker is somewhere in a small town in tech outside of a small town in uh, East Texas, I think. Uh, and we're going to bring Sam in today and see how he's doing. Um, let us know where you are. We love hearing uh, 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 from people all over the world. We've already got Brazil on here. We've got Wales, North Wales, United Kingdom, uh, Edinburgh, no, Peterborough, England. Hey, Andy. Andy. Hey, Andy, we need you. Tour manage this thing, would you? <laughs> uh, I think uh, uh, I think uh, tour managers are... Uh, or do for a benefit show. Artists need to get together and do a show for the tour managers. And we're thinking about you, Andy. We're going to do that before this thing uh, is over. We're going to we're going to make sure we take care of you. Andy has been a great tour manager for us over several seasons. Uh, and tour managers are out of work right now, uh, as are touring artists. Uh, this is how we communicate. It's also how we make our living. And without any gigs uh, and the inability to to play, we don't have any income. So we're Doing this uh, as a way of uh, paying uh, uh, people. I'm I'm responsible for several folks in addition to myself. So uh, your tips and your um, contributions help me to keep uh, my people uh, covered. And we appreciate you showing up. And um, why don't we uh, get the music going? Let everybody uh, get on. They're still signing in. in Berkeley, California. Hello. San Diego, hello. You ready to play? Ready to play? Let's do it. Well, the grasses are swaying. The sun's going down. Music's playing. You're weaving through town, pulled into the driveway. Toss it and paw. Stare out of the windshield, out into the world. It was all for the love of a reckless girl who left you with a second place smile and a broken heart and the street lights are starting to flicker to light they glow for a minute then they get bright fireflies light up circles Spark. There's nothing really that you can do. Put your hands in your pockets, try to get through the distance between the daylight. front porch flags lie themselves down like forgotten soldiers or old wedding gowns and closets unopened and graves without any marks as the night curtain 
seems lower behind the rooftops shadows dance across the sidewalks ricochet off the houses like pieces of art and you may Guys changing all your feelings You're rearranging the rest of your life Like lines on an old sailor's chart You climb back in Fire the ignition Put your hands on the wheel, head into the distance, the distance between the daylight and the So on our end, we're looking into a uh, desktop computer screen <laughs> and um, seeing ourselves, which is, I'll never ever get used to watching myself play. As soon as I look into the computer uh, and see myself, I forget the lyrics <laughs> um, because uh, I worry about how I look instead of singing the song. So I'm just gonna keep my eyes closed when I sing because uh, I really need a haircut. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so does everyone else. Anyone with good hair right now is breaking the damn rules. So, um, but it's, it's hard to look at yourself and sing if, uh, if it's not something you've ever done before. We are not television personalities. We're folk singers, and we travel uh, from town to town singing on small stages all over the world, and it's the best job on earth, and I'm forever grateful uh, every time I take a stage. And we miss you all so much. We miss our job. We miss our work. Uh, we miss the people that we play for. We miss the towns. Uh, we don't miss airplanes. Right now, the thought of airplanes is just terrifying. Uh, we took a flight home from Seattle almost seven weeks ago now yeah. and went into quarantine after that, and we haven't really been in public since. Seven weeks of, uh, of pretty straight-up solitude, uh, except for walking uh, in the park uh, near Nashville. And on the flight home from Seattle, there was a guy coughing and touching things and Everything. coughing and touching <laughs> things constantly, and we were freaking out, and uh, it was... It was uh, burned into our consciousness. That like he got his bag out of the overhead container eight times. Yeah, like he kept getting 18, up to maybe. get his bag out and coughing and touching things, and it was and playing cards on the screen. <laughs> it was ominous and scary, and we don't miss airplanes, but we do miss traveling, and so uh, you know uh, we have other ways to get around uh, other than just flying, and we can make use of them. So, let's play another song, shall we? Sure, yeah. Let's go with the uh, old Fred Eaglesmith song I love so much. This song's called Cigarette Machine, and uh, I did not write it. My great, uh, my, 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 my friend, the great songwriter Fred J. Eaglesmith wrote this song. I've been playing it for years. I love this song. It goes like this. Stumbling past your house, babe, at the break of day. Thought I saw your silhouette dance across the shade. I went down to the mission. I called and called your name till an angel with a face like yours came down and let me in. Thought I saw your reflection in a sea. 
bottle and a gutter and a window on the street and a storefront and a picture on an old broken TV. I swear it was you staring back at me and I heard On the ground, they made me look away. I spilled you on a mirror, I chopped you. Smith. I see you're a request, Fiona, and I am so sorry I did not get that song down this week, but I will get it down next week. I'll have it for you. Uh, Your Sister Cried uh, is a great Fred Eagle Smith song that I also cover, and I did not um, uh, get to it this week in uh, my rehearsals, which did not happen. I have held no rehearsals, <laughs> so I will... Uh, get to that and a bunch of other songs that people are asking for. We should do an all request Sunday. I think so, yeah. Uh, and that will be uh, uh, that will be something that I think uh, uh, is in our future. Hey, New Zealand, good to see you. Uh, hey, I wish Carrie. I wish we had a leader as good as your leader. Um, I wish we had any other leader than the one who we have. Actually, um, New Zealand's being well led through this pandemic, and uh, I have great respect for her and the decisions that she's made. Um, we're careening off the cliff here in America. The mayors are disagreeing with the governors, are disagreeing with the president, are disagreeing with the other mayors. We got complete chaos and pandemonium. 
Some people are opening, some people are closed, some people are wearing masks, other people are protesting. We got a giant mess, and it's chaos and inconsistency and no way to fight a pandemic, in my opinion. But I am not a scientist. I'm a folk singer who is not getting on a plane <laughs> or going into large public gatherings until something uh, tells me uh, that uh, there is safety there. We got a long way to go here, uh, and the chaos is insane. There was a car in front of us. We walked the uh, park uh, near our house the other day. We have a five-mile trail, and it's a really uh, intense climb. It's, it's almost like mountain climbing. It's, the hills of Tennessee are pretty high. Um, and so we were winded, and we do this five and a half miles uh, every day right now because it's beautiful weather, and we need the exercise. And we were coming home, and some idiot had spray-painted his car with all kind of idiot things, and one of them said, flatten the fear. Um, and uh, he was one of these uh, protester guys. Uh, and uh, uh, we, um, we did not uh, raise any obscene uh, gestures or, uh, or try to drive him off the side of the road, but we did register the Im immense stupidity and selfishness of that behavior. Um, we wear masks because it's respectful to wear masks. We wear masks to protect others. We wear masks because it's the right thing to do. Um, we are going to continue to condone positive behavior and to point out behavior that is uh, not in the benefit of the greater good. Um, I think uh, there is such a thing as the greater good and being aware of it with our behavior uh, is respectful. And that's why we wear the mask. So enough preaching from me. Uh, um, you know what? We got a violin player in the green room. And uh, we want to bring Michele in. Michele lives in Italy. And he's been posting beautiful daily missives from his quarantine um, outside of uh, Brescia, which is near Bergamo, which uh, until quite recently was the hottest of the hot spots in this pandemic. Uh, the region of Italy where he lives is about two weeks ahead of the United States in quarantining and awareness uh, and understanding of what they're dealing with. And so I've been looking to him for guidance all along because they're two weeks ahead of us. And uh, let's get an update from Michele, who's, uh, who's here with us. Hey, Maestro. Hey. hey, ciao Mary, ciao Jamie. Hi, ciao. Ciao Maestro, how's everything over there? Uh, here, uh, it's um, actually it's not so different than uh, USA because it's chaos. Also, also here because on uh, on uh, Monday, May 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 fourth, they uh, open a little bit uh, the lockdown. So it's it's uh, you can move in your region. Uh, in every region of of Italy, but you can't go from one region to the other region. So that's so, a, so but, each region is is its own container. Is that what they're trying to do? Each region is contained uh, in, within uh, yes. itself. Yes, yes, they are. But but the problem is that, that uh, every major of uh, of uh, of every region decide differently. So one region uh, you you can go there in, in another one no uh, so it's a, it's really chaos for example uh, in the southern part of, of Italy where the pandemic is less intense uh, in Calabria for example or Puglia it will be it will be everything open even bar and restaurants uh, in the north, nothing. Everything is closed. Obviously, in Lombardia, beside the main thing, you can go to your job. But uh, so uh, it, it's uh, it's chaos because every little part of uh, of uh, Italy uh, will uh, decide in some way in a different way. So uh, it will be difficult to uh, to understand. I will tell you next week. After this, what will happen? <laughs> yeah, we're we're. I think we have very similar chaos. Uh, mm -hmm. One state is open, one state is closed. We even have a situation here in Tennessee where one city's open, one city's closed. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to stop people from getting in the car and driving to a restaurant twenty minutes away? 
You are yeah. not. So it's chaos. It's inconsistent. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to, I think, extend the crisis much longer because yeah. of the inconsistency. Yes, this uh, is uh, yes, this is uh, the problem. So this is not good news. This is really bad news. It will go on and on for this. The only the only good news is is that uh, my hair is perfect. <laughs> yes, I'm you bad. have good hair. You have the best hair of the pandemic. No hair. <laughs> yes. No hair. yes. So uh, everything is fine. But this is uh, so this is great. But beside this. Uh, it will be a week of chaos in Italy. Uh, same here. thing here. Same thing here. Um, and so Lombardy, where you live, uh, everything is closed till, you said June? June 4th? Yes. Now, uh, uh, on Monday, they will open uh, something. You can go uh, to some jobs. But most, but most of the things are closed. Restaurants. Bar, uh, obviously, uh, uh, movie theater, theater. So uh, most of Lombardy is closed and will go on until probably June, but maybe more. So this is the situation because here uh, uh, we uh, it was the hot spot. So we had uh, an incredible number of uh, dead people, also that. Uh, I also knew because everybody uh, knew somebody that died, and not only and uh, not only old and sick people, also also younger people. Same over, same over here, same over yeah. here. The um, the the insanity of one region being closed and one region being open is not lost on us here in the states. We we are dealing with the same uh, insanity and. Uh, Oh, play us a song, Maestro. We're, we don't run the world, but we will, we will play music um, with with our hearts wide open, and continue to do what we can do uh, with our music uh, to reach uh, people and to uh, to do what we were put here to do, which is which is to play uh, these songs uh, with all our heart. Give give us something, Maestro. We'd love to hear your violin. Oh yes, um, Mary. Uh, my idea is uh, to play uh, one uh, instrumental song on my uh, on my violin to uh, introduce uh, our next uh, our next uh, our next guest, our friend. Beautiful, maybe, maestro. Maybe uh, you remember that for more than uh, than one year, I guess we were closing every. Uh, Every concert that we played uh, uh, together with uh, a great, great song by Sam, Go in Peace. And uh, this is uh, really what we need in, in this chaos. Summer we, we did. Yeah, we did. We sang a Sam Baker song every night for over a year at the end. Mm, um, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful closing song, Go in Peace. It's, it's one of Sam's masterpieces. Sam is one of the songwriters that uh, I admire so deeply and has so many masterpieces. I'm excited to have him with us today. And that's a great idea for you to play uh, an instrumental of one of his songs to bring him on. That's brilliant, Maestro. Let's have it. Okay, I'm ready. I take my violin.
Uncle McCarran. What a great way to bring Sam into the conversation. Oh, Thank you, Maestro. I love it so much. Uh, this song is like a it's like a prayer, a, a hymn. Even uh, the melody is like a, a traditional hymn. I love so much this song. It, it definitely is a beckoning for peace and kindness and yeah. respect. And uh, we need that today and every day. But I think particularly today. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. We're going to bring Sam in and we'll bring you back soon, Maestro. Thank you, Michele. Yeah, see you soon. Ciao, Mary. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Well, Sam. I'm, Sam. I'm crying. Can you hear? I am, I am crying. That is, that is the most beautiful thing I've heard. Um, this, this isolation, which which I know is is good, and I do it. I'm as good at isolating. But, but things when, when we isolate, come so powerful. I think, and what Michaela did was, I think, just so powerful. I don't know how. I don't have words for it. He puts so much love into every note um and uh, uh we we uh, really did play that song of yours for for more than a year every night um and uh both Michaela and i and jamie are are huge fans of you and your songwriting uh Aww. we just we just uh, deeply respect the honesty of your work and the vulnerability and the beauty of what you do. And uh, it's such a, a great uh, joy to have you with us today. Tell everybody where you are, Sam. I know you've been isolated even more than us way in the country. I somewhere. have, and it's not East Texas. Uh, it's actually West Texas. You're in West and, Texas. Um, yeah. I know it, and people actually, um, they're prickly about uh, where in Texas you say you're from. So. And I, I'm neutral. I like all parts of it, but I'm, I'm technically in West Texas. I don't know if you can see out. There are not many trees, and the trees that we have here are uh, small. So there's East Texas, West Te Texas, and Central Texas, do you call there it? It is or? Central Texas, right. Okay, all and right. And there's South Texas, and then there's the Panhandle. Okay, all right. So and you're then there's Far West Texas. Uh, yes. <laughs> Far West Texas. Okay. That's where you've been. Right, right, right. That's Terlingua right. Marfa. Terlingua. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah we've been and spending Beauty. Christmas down there the last few years. Really, really beautiful on the border. Correct. So you're in Correct. West Texas uh, in a, a small uh, uh, sort of cabin somewhere? I'm in a cabin. And um, what you were saying, and Michele, what, what you all were saying is this small town... Uh, I'm close to, I, I'm not in that town. Um, I think they thought like everybody else, they would be so far removed from this plague that they would not um, be visited uh, by this uh, by this pandemic. And now their, um, their positive rates is, uh, it's one of the highest in the state per thousand. And uh, I'm, it's, a, it's a very sad thing. There's, there's no one that is um, that is excluded from it. Now, I'm very careful. I isolate uh, rigorously. I wear masks. I have gloves, and I believe uh, that we, our service to, to each other, is um, the most important thing to for me to do right now. And and the service um, that I believe that I serve best at is is not getting sick or not getting anybody else sick, because I've got pals in ER and pals on the front line of, of medicine. And uh, they are exhausted. They uh, they don't have enough uh, equipment like right, to cover themselves or to be protective. And I think the biggest thing is they're exhausted. And when people are exhausted, they they make mistakes. I know I do. Yeah. I do. Right. It's rare to not make mistakes. And when I'm when I'm tired, it's uh, all mistake all the time. <laughs> I mean, have you ever gone to the airport on the wrong day? I have. I have done that. <laughs> I've gone to the wrong. I've gone to the wrong day, the wrong airlines, and really, if it can be done wrong, um, I've done it. You know what I did once? 
I brought my guitar case, checked it, and when I got to the gig, opened it up for sound check, and I forgot to put the guitar in the case. I flew the case to Canada, but I didn't fly the guitar. <laughs> when you're tired, you make mistakes. That's true. I played a wedding, and um, after the wedding, it was on the it was in the Big Bend on the river to a dear friend of mine's uh, wedding, and I had an old J forty five. And after the wedding, I closed my case up and got back on the boat, and we went down river, and I left my guitar. <laughs> I understand. Have you ever left all your stage shirts hanging in a hotel room uh, closet? <laughs> I really don't take stage shirts. I do. I only have three, but when you leave all three of them, you got a major problem. <laughs> that's 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 a modern tragedy. <laughs> hey, listen, it is so good to see all of you. And uh, back to Michaela for a second. That, that's one second before he starts his song. Um, I, I just think that's the most beautiful second because it's like the world stops and takes a breath and says, Maestro, give us something. What is your gift today? Yeah. Yeah. The, the spirit in side of him is so focused on love and giving that you can feel the electricity of his love in every note it's a gift exactly it's a exactly gift. that one second i think a, a portal opens and love pours into that and pours out of that portal it's the weirdest thing but it's beautiful it is absolutely beautiful and consistent it's how it is with michele and uh this is why uh, this is this is why from the minute I heard him play, I knew I wanted to play with them. And, uh, you know, now we're 20 years down the line and I still get to have his violin in my music. And it's a real thrill for me every time. So much love comes through those strings. Ah. Sam Baker, would you play us a song? Yeah, um, I, I will do one and I'm going to do a song that's not mine, but um, it, is, it is one of my heroes and one of my, um, and heroes is not strong enough word. I, I don't have enough, a strong enough word. It's a, he is the benchmark um, for all song, songwriting, I think for me, far forever. It's, um, it's the late, great uh, John Prime. And I'm gonna do one of John's songs. Beautiful. Um, I don't really, do, do that many cover songs for a good reason, but uh, but I don't I don't care. I got a friend. Got a lot to lose. He's a pretty nice fellow. Kind of confused. Got muscles in his head. Never been used. He thinks he owns half of this town. Yeah, he starts drinking heavy, gets a big red nose. He beats his old lady with a, a rubber hose. He takes her out to dinner. He buys her new clothes. That's the the way that the world goes round. Yeah, that's the way that the world goes round. You're up one day, and then the next you're down. As I have an inch of water, you think you're gonna drown, but that's the way that the world goes round. <laughs> I was sitting in my bathtub counting my toes and the radiator broke, the water froze. I got stuck in the ice without my clothes. Naked as the eyes of a clown. 
Crying ice cubes, hoping I croaked the sun come through the window and the ice all broke. I stood up and laughed because I thought it was a joke. That's the way. That's the way that the world goes round. Yeah, that's the way the world goes round. You're up one day, the next you're down. There's a half an inch of water and you think you're gonna drown, but that's the way that the world goes round. That's the way that the world goes round. That's the way that the world world goes round. Yeah, wow, Sam. Yeah, man. I love your version of that song. You capture the um there there's there there's always been great sorrow uh in John's songs, but he's always used humor to seduce us into the scene. Uh that's his that was his one of his great gifts is to make sorrow palatable, to make it possible to get through. He was a genius at that. And I love the way your version of that um, points to the intensity of that song. You could, you, could, you could actually dismiss that song as a little ditty if you're not paying attention to the language. Naked as the eyes of a clown. Naked as the eyes of a clown is what Guy Clark would call a fuck you line. <laughs> The highest yeah. compliment you could ever get from the great folk singer Guy Clark was fuck you. <laughs> I have the great honor of at least two of those from Guy, and that is definitely one of those lines. Naked is the eyes of a clown. My goodness. There's the sorrow right there. My goodness. Oh. I collect pics. Yeah, <laughs> I grabbed one off the little table behind John when I used to open for him. It's a treasure now. It was a treasure then. Oh, man. So, um, what else you got? You got any more songs for us? We'd love to hear some more. I can, I can, or I can talk. I, I'd love to see your faces. Um, you know, what you were saying is um, about all our pals that um, are in the medical community. I'm going to do a song. Um, I'm going to do a song for them. You know, I, this was, uh, I got in a, a mess a long time ago in South America and had a lot of surgeries. And uh, part of the people that um, made my life brought me back to, to wherever I am right now were the, the very brave nurses and doctors and medical people that uh, brought stuff around and um, I don't believe we pay them enough or give them enough time off or, or say enough nice things about them but they are the strongest most beautiful people uh, in the whole world and I'm going to do this song I wrote uh, about people that saved me it's called angels and it's not really about uh, angels like with wings and stuff it's more like um the goodness that comes out of people when they help each other, I yeah. believe. Angels flutter around her heart. Love can heal, they softly call. When trouble comes to the ones she loves, her angels come. They ease all suffering, heal all pain. Her angels come like healing land. 
Love and angels conquer all our rain. The healing angels fall. Love and angels conquer all her healing angels. They softly, they call a man. Call the troops. I call a war. Everyone is a bastard. Everyone is a whore. Everyone is a saint. Everyone is redeemed. And everyone is at the mercy of another one's dream. She heals that suffering, heals all pain, her angels come like healing rain. Love and angels conquer all like a rain, her healing angels fall. Love and angels conquer all her healing angels, they softly, they call amen. Late at night, when dreams are king, I get nervous about what dark brings. And when I call her name, she holds me tight, she whispers, everything's all right. Has suffering heals, all pain her angels come like healing rain. Love and angels conquer all like a rain, her healing angels fall. Love and angels conquer all her healing angels, they suffer. They call a men, call a truce, or call a war. Everyone is a bastard, everyone is a whore, everyone is a saint, everyone is redeemed. And everyone is at the mercy of another one's dream. Beautiful, Sam. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you more. <laughs> Thank you most. The birds. Our friend Catherine said. They are out of control here. The birds are everywhere. Yeah, we got a lot of birds here too. They're uh, they're talking to each other a lot right now. There's communication amongst birds. A lot. It is beautiful. Uh, and, and the songs they sing is really remarkable. Yeah, we keep trying to pay attention to them when we walk. Like to focus on them and to see how many different sounds how many different birds? There's a lot. Turns out we've got a lot of woodpeckers up here, too. Yeah. Uh, hammering, hammering their faces onto a tree. Oh, God. So, man, it's good to see you. You know, I miss you. I miss you a lot. It is so good to see you, Jamie, and Michaela. <clears throat> That's all a big deal to me. Once again, when you're isolation... Um, it's like there's a magnifying glass. And, and you know, when you don't see people or things, you put that magnifying glass on, on things uh, that are small and, they make, and it makes them big. And what I think what I've discovered in isolation is, is that if you hold that glass on there too long, the sun comes through and it starts uh, burning things up. The intensity. The intensity. You get stripped of your defenses. Exactly. Well, I'm not sure you need the normal defenses, and you get new defenses and new things, but the normal defenses I have when I'm around people all the time, I don't really need them as much in isolation. That's so really I, there's, a, I, there's a falling away of, of some defenses, and um, there's another, um, another level of defenses that come up, but I, I just think they're different. 
and the powers of observation, I think, are, 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 are better now. Like seeing that second before Michele started, when the universe stopped just for that, that, that moment to take a breath. Maybe this is what the Walden Pond thing was all about. Maybe this is what Thoreau know. was going after. Is the, you know, this actually has biblical roots, right? Into the desert we go. Into the desert we go. The forty days. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, but I'm saying the absence of stuff brings up other stuff. It's a really interesting observation. What I've noticed for me is my urgency has disappeared. I was I was running on urgency, fueled by caffeine and and a very very fast paced life, and everything was so urgent I didn't have time to pay attention to anything, not really, not not the way you're talking about right now, uh, and I was always a little short with people because I was so urgently going to the next thing, and I'm finding right. that is changing for me, and I. I actually like myself better this way when I can take in what someone says before I'm formulating a response um, right. to just listen and let that moment in between the call and response rest. It's, there's no, we are not going anywhere <laughs> and that's so different. That is really different. And right, 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 right. And we may not for a while. There, there's no, there's, I don't have plane reservations. I don't have rental cars. I have nothing. Yep. And, and that, that absence is a big deal. It is, a, especially for folks like us. I guess everybody was on the let's go faster train. But, man, we were moving at the oh, speed yeah. of life. We were moving. Well, I mean, Jamie and I were in uh, over 300 hotel rooms in 2018. And Michele was gone from his home for months. We were we were on a rocket ship. And then it just, th there I was just, somebody put the emergency brake and it stopped. And so we had to whiplash. And now that the slowdown has been internalized, um, uh, the powers of perception are different. And, and it's actually... Um, uh, an interesting experience to self-reflect on. And, and I love your observations. I think that it's, it's true for me too, in, in some ways, but because I'm in, I'm in quarantine with another person, we, we have each other to interact with. So it's that we don't have the solitude that, that you're experiencing. You're doing the full on thorough. Like yeah, that. it's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, I don't know um, how to really describe it, but I, I do think the smallest things become big and almost uh big in a Kafka way where the where the bug where the bug the, 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 the cockroach <laughs> the cockroach giant. yeah the yeah. cockroach eats the ship and that's not what we want <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um we'd love to hear another song if you're willing yeah let me do one more and let me do um the song that Michele played. I'll do um, that Go In Peace song because I, I try to do that, um, Mary, uh, I'll, really every chance I get because all it does, it's not a, a fancy song, it's very short. It comes from a, a, a childhood of going to church, uh, really every every chance the, the, the church doors open, my mother would uh, have us children uh, at the church in, in our same in our show clothes, we had one set of show clothes and we'd wear those every day. The, the church door was open and we would go there and, and we never left our show clothes anywhere, to be honest. We were able to keep up with them. With one pair, it's hard to lose them. With one pair, it's hard to lose them. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me do this one little uh, thing, go in peace. And I want to say thank you. I know there are a lot of people um, tuning in and I haven't figured out how to do read what people are saying so i don't know that i'm uh it's right now it's just the four of us so my guess is there's probably somebody else watching but I, I just don't know that you got a lot of love there's a lot of love coming oh, for you yeah i i love a lot of people and and i want uh, 
if I'm getting off right now, I would like to say everybody be safe. Um, this stuff is dangerous. Um, don't take chances with yourself or, the, or anybody. Or uh, just uh, remember this: we don't know much right now. We're in a place of not knowing, and it's very difficult to be in a place of not knowing and have any comfort. So, in my tiny world, what I try to do is um, figure out what might be the next right thing and do that. And uh, for the most part, the next right thing is to be very careful and uh, and 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 not be exposed to this terrible plague or expose anyone else. Go in peace. Yeah, go in kindness. Go in love. Go in faith. Day, day behind us, day is gone. Here go in grace. Let us go into the dark, not afraid, oh, not alone. And let us hope. Some good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Oh, let us hope by some good pleasure safely to. I love that song so much, and I love you. <laughs> I love all you so much, and you you make my life brighter, and you're all three an inspiration. <laughs> Back at you, my friend. Back at you. If the listeners out there are not familiar with your music, let me be the first to say every single one of Sam's records is a gem. Um, and, and I have the collection. This is the most recent Sam Baker record. It's called Land of Doubt. Uh, it's gorgeous. But I've got, look at young Sam. Oh, my God. Ah. That looks like, I look like Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> when I was making my very first record with Gurf Morlicks in Austin, Texas, he was singing your praises. And that was about 1999, 98? No, it's probably 2000 and something because I didn't even, uh, I was building apartments in uh, 99 and 2000. When did, and when did this first record come out? 2004. Is that right? So I guess Gurf, Gurf knew about you before you made a record somehow. I don't think so because... Tim Fink gave him the record, but saying that, I talked to our friend Gurf Morlicks last night, and we said many, many nice things about you. Oh, is he in Canada doing his... Uh... No, he's, he's in Austin. Oh, he can't get to Canada. He can't cross the border right now. Correct. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a big deal. He's it's been a big deal. there for decades. Oh. Yeah, Gurf and Brindy go to Canada every summer and uh, every summer have since I've known them for thirty years. And yeah. have since I've known them. Uh, yeah, well, I'm thinking of calling him myself. Thanks for the heads up. Uh, you call him. He's a, he's adorable. Oh, he's the best. He's the best. So it was 2004, huh? I've got my years all messed up. <laughs> um, when you're in isolation, the years are a bit interchangeable. I told Jamie when I met her, I, I can't do time. I can do a lot of things, but I can't do time. Uh, time is yeah. jumbled up. It's 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 not something that I'm any good at. So uh, I, I gave up on it and I don't even try. So uh, 
Sorry, I mangled your years there. So it was 2004. That's okay. <coughs> Mary, that's a lot like calculus. And some people are good at it <laughs> and some are not. Uh, well, well, we'll bring you back for another song towards the end, if that's okay with you. Whatever you want. I'm, I'm happy to you. help in any way. One more from you coming up uh, shortly. And uh, we'll play a couple uh, in the middle here and then bring you back. All right? Okay, whatever. I'm happy to help. <laughs> Thank you. See you later, Sam. Yeah, so Jamie's hitting buttons to change this processing sound. Uh, there's a little bit of studio work that goes into this. We have to change uh, the background um, when we're talking uh, from when we're playing because uh, there's a, a technological thing that thinks when we're playing it's background noise and it uh, compresses it and makes it sound terrible. So we figured out how to make it sound better, but it involves a few moves. So I thought I would tell a story. Um, I, at one time, I'm from New Orleans. I, at one time, I thought I was going to write a whole record uh, about the, the natural da disaster and human catastrophe of Katrina. I got it in my mind that that was something I wanted to take on, and I... I, I set out to do it. Um, I did not accomplish it. Um, I just didn't have uh, 10 great songs. In fact, uh, as hard as I worked, I only ended up with a handful I really liked. But I did a lot of research during that time to, to try to bring that project to life. Uh, and I found a lot of stuff um, that, um, that educated me. And I learned a lot about um, uh, the flood of 27 which was a catastrophe in Louisiana and Mississippi. And um, um, one of the things I found when I was doing my research is this, it's called the Mississippi Flood Song. I was poking around. This was this sheet music. You can see it says uh, 1927 on it. And um, there's songs that you probably know that were written about the flood of 27. For example, When the Levee Breaks. That Led Zeppelin, uh, well, let's go Led Zeppelin song. <laughs> yeah. That song was written by Memphis Minnie, uh, a Southern uh, blues singer. Uh, and uh, there's a, a lot of uh, songs in the popular vernacular that were written about the flood of 27. Uh, this one didn't make it big, but I got this sheet music. It's beautiful and collectible. But here's the, um, here's the chorus. It was just a gorgeous refrain. It says, on the Mississippi shore, I'm alone in the silvery light, and my poor heart is aching for those who sleep in the waters tonight. Um, and I was just looking for guidance as a songwriter, looking to other songwriters that came before me for how to, how do you write about something so catastrophic? Uh, and uh, actually, this was given to me, this here. It's a piece of a fence that was destroyed in Katrina from the French Quarter. I've got all these things in my writing room that people have gifted me over the years, totems uh, and memorabilia, and I keep them around me. Uh, they, they help me as a songwriter to keep me inspired. And, and that piece of fence was given to me by an insurance adjuster. Hmm who uh, decided uh, who gets paid after the disaster. Uh, and uh, I look at it, and um, it, in, in a weird way, um, it brings, brings me hope. Because after Katrina, it didn't seem possible for New Orleans to make a comeback. Um, and uh, I know the great city of New Orleans continues to make comebacks. They're really hurting right now. They've been a, a hot spot for this virus. Uh, a lot of the small bayou towns have been hit pretty hard as well. Uh, and uh, uh, there's uh, also a constant problem down there of, of land loss. It's the fastest receding land mass on planet Earth, the state of Louisiana. They lose the equivalent of a football field a day. Into the ocean it goes. Uh, so... Uh, the Cajun people who ended up there because of a diaspora thrown out of Eastern Canada, uh, they are, uh, are being threatened again by uh, land loss. There's entire cemeteries that are underwater now. 
So uh, we'll send this out to the folks down there. Uh, and uh, it's called Can't Find the Way. It's, it's the one song I salvaged from my Katrina project that I actually still like. I'm good to go. This is not my street. This is not my house That is not my bed This is not my town Another day, another night Another night, another day Wanna go home? I can't find the way. up there and cry What else could I do Another day another night Another night another day I want to go home Can't find the way. took me to I-10. I sat there three days, maybe four. Thousands stranded on the interstate. Every hour, boats brought more. Another day, another night. nothing but our dreams and memories of who we've been scattered forth like seed at the mercy of the wind another day another night Another night, another day. Wanna 
wanna go home I can't find the way Another day, another night Another night, another day Wanna go home Oh, thank you. I had to write seven bad ones to get to that good one. <laughs> I know this one. That is the ratio I work <laughs> with. Um, let me um do a quick wow. uh uh commercial uh here for stuff. Um, I am trying very hard to keep um the people I work with employed or the people who work for me. They really actually work with me. Um, so I'm hoping to um, uh, get some um, uh, income from these shows. Uh, we appreciate your tips and donations. It keeps Michaela and Jamie and uh, Robin employed, and also uh, we're going to send some money down to Sam, of course. And uh, we write these. I write these. Can you see it? It looks blanked out. You can't really see it so good. I write these handwritten lyric sheets. Uh, there's something wrong with the light there, but... Um, uh, if you have a favorite Mary Gaucher song, uh, go to my website, uh, and I will write out the lyric, and I'll personalize it for you, put the date on it, and send it to you straight away. Uh, really quick turnarounds right now. I will work on those uh, overnight and have them to you in the morning, uh, at least to the, uh, to the post office. What they do from there, who knows, in the great United States of America, our post office is on their last leg. We also have these tea towels, um, which also seem to have a difficult lighting situation. These are just regular towels, you know, they're kitchen towels, but uh, we've printed out the words of mercy now on the towel, and the tea towels are available as well on the, on the website. So come get a tea towel. It says mercy now on it, which is a song we're going to all play together at the end of this uh, show. And we're selling quite a few of these uh, this is the bundle of my entire life work. Uh, it's all ten records I've ever made. The bundle is usually uh, eight records, but we're adding the new record and uh, a small little record that's really hard to find that I didn't really release. Uh, it's called The Foundling Alone. It's my demos for The Foundling uh, record. So it's all ten records that I've made, my life work, 50 bucks. I'll get it to you in the mail in the morning in this wonderfully, perfectly fitting box. Uh, send them anywhere in the world. Uh, I'd love to, to get one out to you, and that will help me keep my people working. Um, there's no way for most musicians to make money without playing shows, um, at least the musicians like us. Uh, if you have big hits and are living on royalties from uh, film and television, that's probably uh, got uh, an income stream attached to it that can, can help in these times. Uh, but we're, we're troubadours, and we work the road, and we go from town to town and play small places and meet folks, and it's the best life that there is, and we miss it so, so much. Um, I, I lay in bed at night dreaming of places I've been, thinking of restaurants I've eaten at and people I've met, um, I've got uh, such an incredible uh, life, and uh, I miss, as we all do, our life. Um, we miss our lives that we had before. Uh, but the traveling life is, uh, is a really good life, um, and uh, we'll be back uh, as soon as it's safe. Um, but for now, this is what we've got, and this is what we'll do. We'll play for you here on the uh, live stream. I'm so grateful for Jamie putting together uh, this uh, stream yard so we can bring guests into the room uh, and talk to other folks. Um, I'd love to have uh, Jamie play a song for us. Are you up for it? Are you? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, yeah. I wasn't yeah. Uh, is there anything you'd like to hear in particular? That Graham was... Yeah, any, any old song. You want to uh, click over to this guy. Sure. Just, just hit that. Yeah. Uh, 
And yeah, play a song. If you got a little, I'm sorry I caught you off guard. No, there. it's okay. I hear. I just was just hearing that someone is having trouble with um, PayPal. So I was trying to figure out what was going on there. So I was on Tech Brain. Uh, anything you like to hear? Um, keep me on your mind. Sure. All right. Yeah, this song is definitely. Uh, I'm lucky, Mary, uh, for my birthday, I got this great gift where I got to go into the studio with Aaron Lee Tashton, and we recorded this song, so hopefully we'll get it out sooner than later. Jamie had her 30th birthday in quarantine here, and my mom, who might be watching if she was able to figure out how to click onto the Facebook link, had her 84th birthday in quarantine, and um, gosh, you know, happy birthday to all the quarantiners. <laughs> I wish we could do more, but I was able to get Jamie a present prior to the quarantine that uh, uh, was uh, sold at an auction for the f a fundraiser for the bushfires in Australia. Uh, the wonderful songwriter Aaron Lee Tashian uh, auctioned off a day in the studio, and I purchased it for Jamie's birthday. So uh, there's a beautiful recording of this uh, that will be coming out as soon as the recording studios uh, reopen and they can <laughs> yeah. finish mixing and mastering it. Uh, they made a lovely version of it, and I'd love to hear it if you wouldn't sure, mind playing yeah. it. Thank you. Aaron produced. It was a really beautiful session. They said that it would come, and the heavens opened up, and the sky began to cry all the rain. Saw it all from Tennessee Wishing you were here with me Wishing I was wrapped up in your arms again I keep listening to your song It helps me to carry on In a world I see You're a million miles from me, but it's quite the poet's dream to feel such a longing, feel so tortured, no such love. Won't you keep me on your mind as we wander through this time, marking off the days with axes and hopes? I will do the same, you know, babe. Far behind as you go, won't you keep me on your mind? I can only dream of all the places you have seen, or to fly on. Of a song, we'll spin our tail and rhyme, put love in every line, and we'll be singing here together before long. Won't you keep me on your mind as we wander through this time, marking off the days with X's and
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. That's so sweet. Thanks. Thank you. Let's bring everybody back before we do the finale. Yeah, totally. Let me change our settings here so we have no echoey. Get rid yeah. of the audio processing. Bring back Michaela. And totally. Yeah. Everybody's in the room. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. It was so great. So great to see you all. Uh, all this uh, love that was uh, in the air between us, between you, Mary, Jamie, and Sam. It was love that inspired all these things. So uh, I feel so, so, so grateful to you and to Sam. I love it. We love you too, Michele. Thank you. And we're very, we're very also, lucky to have both of you. Uh, all the connected in our life and on this screen, and and uh, thank you for thank you for giving so much with your music and uh, and for putting one hundred percent into all that you do. It's just beautiful, and uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, I thought I'd tell a quick story. You know, Michele and I were driving around in England somewhere listening to this record when it was new, the yeah. Sam Baker record. And we were loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. And then the last song came on, Land of Doubt. Um, and I looked at Michele and Michele looked at me and I'm like, wait a minute. There's something in that song. And we started doing the thing where you hit repeat, repeat, repeat. I guess we listened to that song 10 times in a row. Um, it's a very, very interesting and special song. Um, and um, uh, it's a mystery. I still, it's a mystery song, uh, mysterious. But it, uh, uh, this record was produced uh, by Nielsen Hubbard. Uh, and um, Nielsen and Sam, um, the sound of that song told me it was uh, like a light bulb screwed in. And that is when I called Nielsen Hubbard uh, to see if he would be willing to work with me on the collection of songs uh, that became uh, uh, Rifles and Rosary Beads, the veteran songs. Uh, but it was Land of Doubt that gave me and Michele that knowing that this is where we need to take these songs. And uh, I want to thank you for that, Sam. Thank you. Nielsen, you guys, thank you. I'm, I am the, one of the luckiest people on earth. For some reason, like today, each of you and Nielsen, um, you know, I have been given um, access to some of the most beautiful artists on earth. And I am always shocked and grateful that, that artists like each of you and Nelson and his great team um, support what I do and not just play, they, um, they understand. And that's a, a, one of the greatest gifts of my life. I second that. Yeah. yeah I second yeah. that. I, when we started on this journey, when I started on this journey 30 years ago or so, uh, I could have never, ever, ever in my wildest dreams imagined being friends with the great artists that I call my friends today. It's one of the yeah, miracles neither. really of, of this mysterious ride that we get, we get to be associates and friends with some of the most incredibly creative and loving uh, people uh, on the planet. Uh, it's just a, an honor. Uh, Todd Snyder wrote a, a piece for Rolling Stone about John Prine. I would highly recommend it. Google it if you're out there. Uh, and the basic idea of the piece that he wrote was, I can't believe I knew him. And um, I get that feeling over and over again in the presence of, of so many incredibly gifted, uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful artists. I uh, can't, can't believe it. It's just a, yeah, a blessing, a an blessing. incredible yeah. blessing. I want to thank you guys for joining us. I want to encourage folks to get Michele's record on his website. Please get Sam's records on, on his website. Uh, we'll distribute the tips uh, and contributions that come in after the show uh, amongst those uh, who uh, are working uh, the screen right now and who work <laughs> for me 
as well uh, behind the scenes. I want to keep people paid uh, as uh, as this goes forward. Uh, it becomes more and more dire for people who depend on musicians and musicians. Uh, we have no work and we have no income, and so we're grateful for your contributions uh, to keep uh, to keep folks uh, in uh, rent and food. Thank you, thank you so much, Michaela, hey. Sam. It's good to see you. Uh, we're gonna move towards uh, the sing along portion of the. Oh. I was going to say, do you want to have Sam? I didn't know if Sam Oh, do we have, we have time? a lot of people that joined us after the, yeah, after. I'm, I'm happy to do either. Let's do it. No. Sam, so. no, Sam, there's people who must be coming off of another yeah. show that just came to this show. Exactly. So, uh, they, we, we, we definitely have time. It's not like we have anywhere to go. Or it's not like I have anywhere to go or anything to do. But I, <laughs> I'll do this. Mary, this was the, the one of the this was the first song on the first record, and I mean it's a love song because Jamie did a beautiful love song. And um, speaking of, uh, you know, I worked with Walt Wilkins and Tim Lorsch, and they were so beautiful, and they were friends with Jesse Coulter, who is Waylon Jennings' widow, and she came and sang harmony on this, and I was such a nobody, and it was. Uh, the spirit of generosity among artists is, um, I don't know, I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe it. But that was um, shockingly miraculous. <laughs> So many hardships, so many laughs, so many tears, so many things to remember. They had 50 years. Now the kids, they've got their own kids. Kids, they are grown. She told him not to worry. Said he'd be fine. And she was gone. Walks down to the ocean. Bends to touch the water. Kneels to pray. He writes her name. There are seagulls there, certain shrimp boats. Yeah, they turn inside the bay. There's an emptiness that's inside. It never goes away. Walks down to the ocean and prints to touch the water. Needs to pray, he writes her name. Wash it away. So many years and so many hardships, there's so many laughs, so many tears. Things he cannot remember. But they had fifty years. Walk 
walks down to the ocean. Prince and touch the water, needs to pray. He writes her name in the sand. Waves wash it away. He writes her name in the sand. Wait. Oh, you know, they wash it away. <laughs> Sam, we love you. I love you all. We'll see you soon somewhere on a screen somewhere. <laughs> on a screen. On these tiny televisions. That's all of us. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank oh, you for joining us, Sam, and Michaela as well. Thank you. We appreciate it. I love it. you all so much. Love, love you. you, Sam. Thank you so much. <laughs> So um, before we all play Mercy Now uh, together, if you've got the chord chart that Jamie posted on my website and on Facebook too, you posted I, a link? I think just a link, yeah. You posted Facebook. a link to the chord chart for Mercy Now. It's three chords, a G, a C, and a D. She can post it there as well. Um, uh, I'm going to read a little thing from the manuscript I'm working on for uh, my St. Uh, Martin's Press book. Uh, the book is called Saved by a Song. Uh, I'm slowly pushing it up Book Mountain. Um, I, I um, have to say, writing a book is one of the hardest things I've ever done. And uh, it, it is a challenge uh, to, to, to beat all challenges. I, I'm a songwriter. I'm used to everything being on one, on one page. So having a, um, a pile of pages is so confusing to me because I don't remember what I said prior. So it's a memory problem thing as well as just getting beautiful paragraphs turns out is not easy. Um, anyway, this is a, um, a short story about how Mercy Now started, uh, how, how the song was born inside of me. Um, and I tried to capture um, that moment of inspiration when the song started coming. Um, uh, it began in a, a small hotel room on the east coast of Canada, a little bitty town called Canso. Uh, uh, Canso uh, has a lighthouse, and that was the lighthouse that received the distress call from the Titanic. It's a remote village way up in Nova Scotia. There's a grand total of 12 hotel rooms in the entire town, and I was sitting in one of them when I started to write this song. Uh, and the year, I think, was 2002. So I was sitting on my bed in a small motel room in Canada thinking about my father. He'd wrecked his car on the way to Rouse's grocery store in Thibodeau, Louisiana, and landed upside down in a ditch. He was taken by ambulance to the hospital. He went into withdrawal from alcohol a few days later and suffered TIAs, which are small strokes of the brain that left him with Alzheimer's-like symptoms. He was moved into a home with an around-the-clock nurse. My sister called me and told me he was not improving and I should go see him while I still could. So I got on a plane and flew down to Louisiana and stopped along the way from New Orleans Airport to pick him up a couple of packs of Fruit of the Loom t-shirts, some boxer shorts, a half dozen or so pair of new socks, uh, and a few things uh, that my sister said he needed. When I arrived, uh, there was a nurse sitting in a chair inside his room blocking the front door. She let me in and told me she was blocking the door because he'd walked out into the street and almost got hit by a car, then became agitated when she stopped him from going outside again. The nurse looked exhausted, and I thanked her for helping him. She said he was in his bedroom and could go in. I could go in and see him. I approached hesitantly 
poked my head in and said, Daddy, hey, how you doing? He looked up from the bed where he was sitting fully clothed with his shoes on, staring at the wall. He said, we have to stop them. I said, Daddy, it's Mary. Do you know who I am? He said, we have to go now. We have to stop them now. I put my hand on his shoulder and said, Daddy, why don't you lay down? Can I lay down next to you? Maybe we can rest a little. He ignored me, got up, and walked into the kitchen and began pacing. The nurse in the chair by the front door flinched, thinking he was, thinking he was going to try to bolt out again. He started looking for a pen and paper to write on, searching drawers and cabinets. I found a yellow legal pad and a pencil and handed it to him. Then my father, a man known for his beautiful penmanship since he was a boy, sat up perfectly straight at the kitchen table and proceeded to write gibberish, scratches that looked like scrawled lines of a preschooler. He held the legal pad up to his chest, looked up and said, sir, no, sir, I cannot answer that question, sir. Was he on a witness stand in some kind of military tribunal in his mind? Was he back in Korea? where he'd served two years in counterintelligence during the Korean War. He'd never spoken of his war or his service. I had no reference for what he was saying. His face, though, had taken on a smooth and healthy glow. His skin was clearer than I'd ever seen it. A daily drinker and three-pack-a-day smoker before the wreck, had he forgotten that he smoked and drank? The thousands of broken capillaries caused by decades of alcoholism that had covered him from ear to ear were healing. He looked 20 years younger than the last time I'd seen him, but his mind was gone. He lost what he was saying in mid-sentence, got confused, put the pencil and paper down, and went back to his bedroom and sat on the bed and began staring again. I followed him. He said, where's my rosary? Can we pay the, pray the rosary? His rosary was on the nightstand next to his bed, so I picked it up and handed it to him. As he reached for it, I saw veins and bones sticking up from under the thin skin on his hands and arms, along with clusters of dark brown age spots, IV bruises and scars. I winced. Then I reached for his hand and held it against my heart. I'd not held my father's hand in over 40 years. He looked at me for a moment. Neither of us spoke. Then he said, baby, daddy is dying. His voice had the sweetest tone, gentle, kind, no anxiety, no mental illness, no alcoholism, no paranoia, no cruelty, no dark angels. He spoke in the most peaceful and loving tone. I did not know this man or who he thought he was. I no longer knew myself either. Our roles had reversed. I was the parent. He was the child. I felt the urge to protect him, to keep him safe from harm. The war with my father was over, the fight no longer fair. The thought of battling him now was mortifying. I suddenly loved my father in a new way, a love void of expectations. I loved him dearly, beyond my understanding of love. I pushed down tears and prayed a silent prayer for Joseph Goche. I prayed for mercy. I prayed for his suffering to stop. Then I put my arms around my daddy. I held him close for the first time since I was a child. I drove back to New Orleans, returned the car at the airport, and I flew to Canada. I arrived in Canso, Nova Scotia two days before I was scheduled to play the Stan Rogers Folk Festival. I got checked into my little room at the last port motel and with plenty of time on my hands, as I sat on the bed thinking about my father, I pulled out my guitar. As I played, I tried to picture him as a child, the boy who never met his own father, whose single mother owned and ran Ginny's Cafe. I thought about it, what it must have been like for him to be raised by his grandmother, a woman who spoke only Italian and went to church twice a day in a black dress, black shoes, and a black veil over her face. I'd spent my whole life fighting my father. But now I hurt for my father. His life would soon be coming to an end, and what I wanted for him most was mercy. I picked a simple GCD pattern on the guitar, hitting alternate bass notes with my thumb. I mumbled nonsense words, really just vowels, 
ending the lines with my father, mercy, mercy, mercy now. <laughs> and that's the story of the beginning of this song. Uh, I wrote a couple of verses in Canso, flew across Canada to Canmore, British Columbia, to play um, a festival there after the Stan Rogers Folk Festival, the Canmore Folk Festival. And I had a few free days and I finished the song uh, in Western Canada and debuted it at that festival in 2002, or three. I can't remember because I can't do time. <laughs> Everybody get your instruments out. Let's play this together. And uh, you guys wear the mask when you go out. It's a way of showing respect for other people. It's a way of protecting others until we know uh, what's going on. Uh, that's what we're going to do. And um, I'll see you guys. Uh, we've got a couple of more streams this week. Uh, they'll be up on my Facebook page. Uh, we'll be here next Sunday as well. And hopefully I'll be able to bring a couple of veterans on next week. And we could talk about the Songwriting with Soldiers project uh, and have some folks that I wrote with. Wrote with. Uh, I have not been able to to make the calls yet, but I know I know who I want to ask and they <laughs> probably know who, who they are too. So I'll, I'll reach out to them this week and, and we'll play some of those songs. I know people are asking for them. So we'll get to that uh, next Sunday. Thank you again to Jamie Harris for setting up the technology. Michele and Sam, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, here we go. This song is three chords, three chords. Uh, it's a G shape on the second fret. Uh, and if you uh, uh, have a look, I'll show you the little hammer on that I do. You can disable the audio okay. processing. <laughs> and uh, it's this little... My father sure could use a little mercy now The fruits of his labor falling right slowly on the ground His work is almost over, won't be long he won't be around I love my father He could use some mercy now And my brother Sure could use a little mercy now Stranger to freedom, shackled to his fear and doubt. The pain that he lives in, it's almost more than living will allow. I love my brother. My church and my country, they could use a little mercy now. As they sink into a poison pit, it's going to take forever to climb out. Carry the weight of the faithful who follow them down. I love my church and country, they could use some mercy now. Every living thing could use. 
See y'all next week. Thanks for joining us. Take care. <laughs>